Hey Chef Kids, our newest steam in the kitchen activity is baking bread. Okay, the five steps of baking bread is mixing, kneading, heating, cooling. No, it is mixing, kneading, rising, heating, cooling. And we can make it a song. Mixing, kneading, rising, heating, cooling. Now you know the five steps of baking bread. The basic process involves mixing and kneading ingredients until the flour is converted into a stiff paste or dough. After rising, the bread is heated or baked, then cooled. Hey, Chef Kids, we are here and we're ready to make our bread, our dinner rolls. And we're gonna start off with our wet ingredients. So our wet ingredients are a half a cup unsweetened almond milk, a fourth cup of warm water, and we're gonna use a tablespoon of this honey, this way, this honey, and then also some plant-based butter, and I'm using this Wayfair brand. Okay, and for our dry ingredients, we're going to be using two cups of whole wheat flour. I'm using spelt, and um, about a half a teaspoon of salt, and that's regular Himalayan salt, and then a packet of dry yeast. So seven ingredients, that's it. Bread making is an art form, and the secret to crafting the perfect loaf lies in the dough. A stretchy, bouncy ball of dough is key for optimal rising and expansion during the baking process. The science behind this lies in the proteins, gliadin and glutenin, which when combined with water transforms into gluten. Gluten is essential for bread making and influences the mixing, kneading and baking properties of the dough. When you start to bake bread, learning to mix the ingredients is the most important thing. So that first step is mixing and mixing has two functions. Number one is to evenly distribute the various ingredients. And then number two, it's to allow the development of the protein, which is the gluten. And that protein network gives you the best bread possible. Each dough has an optimum mixing time depending on the flour and mixing method that you use. I just added a little more gluten-free flour to it so it was less sticky. And you might have to do that too. And that's included in your recipe. After mixing all of the ingredients for our recipe, What's next? Is it A, kneading, B, baking, or C, rising? Answered A for kneading, you were correct. So let's start kneading. Okay, so why do we need to knead the bread? The secret to this rhythmic motion is to stretch and fold the dough, creating an elastic texture by building up the gluten in the flour. Plus, it's a great way to set free any pesky gas bubbles that form during the rise. What's the result? A consistent texture and temperature all around. After that, the dough takes a breather and it rises again before another round of kneading, depending on what you want your final product to look like. So we're going to let this bread sit in a warm area after kneading to allow the yeast to make the bread rise. A key ingredient to success is dough that is stretchy, like a rubber band. And it's not just about being stretchy. It has to have the muscle to hold in all those bubbles while rising and keeping its shape and structure. These are our stretch goals right here. Okay, now watch in amazement as the dough transforms from a dense blob to a silky smooth wonder with a talent for holding on to gas. Yeast chows down on those sugars, converting them into carbon dioxide and water. But that requires a lot of oxygen to pull this off. With limited oxygen in a bread dough, the yeast creates alcoholic fermentation and produces carbon dioxide and alcohol instead. The carbon dioxide gas produced during fermentation rises the dough and then that evaporates partially the alcohol produced and creates a tiny network of bubbles that become the cells inside. As these cells fill with gas, the dough swells in size. 
We're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes and let it rise and then knead it for a second time so it can rise again. Okay, so there is a second rising. So after you knead your dough, you'll let it rise and then you'll leave it in a warm area covered with a towel, preferably, and then you're gonna let it rise a second time. During that rising stage, or proving it's called, the dough again fills with more bubbles of gas. And once that has proceeded far enough, the doughs are transferred to the oven for baking. So then we're gonna bake our bread. So here on this slide, you can see what the dough looks like in a microscope. So the first one on the top left, that is the general appearance of the dough. And it has large gas holes lined with gluten, with smaller holes, and, and of course the ingredients between. But then after two hours of rising, if you look at the bottom right, that's how the strands look in a little lattice as the dough reaches the required size. Isn't that cool? Now what we're going to do is knead it one more time for its second rising. And look how stretchy it is now. Wow, those are our stretch bowls. That is what we were looking for it to do. So now we can knead it again, and then we can um, let it sit for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to bake it, which is our heating part. So remember from our song, mixing, kneading, rising, heating, cooling. Now we are on step four, and we're gonna watch this transformation. That lump of dough you started with turns into a fluffy, scrumptious masterpiece. As the dough hits the oven, the heat gets working, making the gases inside the dough jump up and down like popcorn. This is called oven spring, and it's a reaction between the gases and the heat creating pressure. Just like how a balloon gets bigger when you blow it up, Gas cells inside the dough get larger as the heat cranks up. Yeast also produces that carbon dioxide that we talked about before, and that starts to dissolve into the dough. As the temperature heats up, the carbon dioxide turns into gas and moves into the gas cells. This makes them puff up even more, and boom, you've got a perfectly risen dough ready to be devoured. But the oven technology does not stop working there. The heat also causes liquids to evaporate, turning them into gases. Even the alcohol produced by the yeast is evaporated, leaving only the delicious flavor behind. Because the live yeast produces an alcohol that needs to die off before eating, eating warm bread will make it difficult for your tummy to digest. Also, fresh baked bread is filled with steam and that can make your bread damp. So you wanna make sure to cut your bread once it's completely cool. And that helps to, for the flavor to be locked in and so you don't have a dry loaf. Here's our finished product, Chef Kids, and I've already tasted it. It is so yummy. Make sure you like and subscribe. Message me on Instagram and let me know what you thought of your bread this month. Thanks guys, see you next month.